early Indologists wished to control and convert the followers of Vedic culture. Therefore, they widely propagated that the Vedas were simply mythology. Max Muller, perhaps the most well-known early Sanskritist and Indologist, although later in life he glorified the Vedas, initially wrote that the Vedas were worse than savage and India must be conquered again by education. Its religion is doomed. Thomas Macaulay, who introduced English education into India, wanted to make the residents into a race that was Indian in blood and color, but English in taste, in opinion, in morals, and in intellect. However, the German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer stated that the Sanskrit understanding of these Indologists was like that of young schoolboys. These early Indologists devised the Aryan invasion theory, denying India's Vedic past. They taught that the English educational system is superior. They intentionally misinterpreted Sanskrit texts to make the Vedas look primitive. And they systematically tried to make Indians ashamed of their own culture. Thus the actions of these Indologists seems to indicate that they were motivated by a racial bias. Innumerable archaeological findings and their analysis have recently brought the Aryan invasion theory into serious question. This theory is still taught as fact in many educational systems despite much contrary evidence. The Aryan invasion theory is that the Vedic Aryans entered India between 1500 and 1200 BCE. They conquered the native Dravidian culture by virtue of their superiority due to their horses and iron weapons. They imported the Vedic culture and its literatures. This Aryan invasion theory, however, deprives the inhabitants of India of their Vedic heritage. The wealth of their culture came from foreign soil. The Aryan invasion theory raises an interesting dilemma called Frawley's Paradox. On the one hand, we have the vast Vedic literature without any archaeological finds associated with them. And on the other hand, we have 2,500 archaeological sites from the Indus Sarasvat civilization without any literature associated with them. A preponderance of contemporary evidence now seems to indicate that these are one and the same cultures. This certainly eliminates this paradox and makes perfect sense to an unbiased researcher. Facts which cast serious doubt on the Aryan invasion theory are there is no evidence of an Aryan homeland outside of India mentioned anywhere in the Vedas. On the contrary, the Vedas speak of the mighty Saraswati River and other places indigenous to India. To date, no evidence for a foreign intrusion has been found, neither archaeological, linguistic, cultural, nor genetic. There are more than 2,500 archaeological sites, two-thirds of which are along the recently discovered dried-up Saraswati River bed. These sites show a cultural continuity with the Vedic literature from the early Harappan civilization up to the present-day India. Several independent studies of the drying up of the Saraswati River bed all indicate the same time period of 1900 BCE. The significance of establishing this date for the drying up of the Saraswati River is that it pushes the date for the composition of the Rig Veda back to approximately 3000 BCE as enunciated by the Vedic literature itself. The late dating of the Vedic literatures by Indologists is based on speculated dates of 1500 BCE for the Aryan invasion and 1200 BCE for the Rig Veda, both now disproved by scientific evidence.
Max Mueller, the principal architect of the Aryan invasion theory, admitted the purely speculative nature of his Vedic chronology, and in his last work, published shortly before his death, The Six Systems of Indian Philosophy, he wrote, Whatever may be the date of the Vedic hymns, whether 1500 or 15,000 BCE, they have their own unique place and stand by themselves in the literature of the world. It can be scientifically proven that the Vedic culture is indigenous through archaeology, the study of cultural continuity, by linguistic analysis, and genetic research. For example, the language and symbolism found on the Harappan seals are very Vedic. We find on these seals the Om symbol, the leaf of the Asvata or holy banyan tree, as well as the swastika or sign of auspiciousness, mentioned throughout the Vedas. Om is mentioned in the Mundaka and Kata Upanishads, as well as the Bhagavad Gita. The holy Ashvata tree is mentioned in the Aitariya and Satapatta Brahmanas, as well as the Taitariya Samhita and Katyayana Smriti. The pictorial script of these Harappan seals has been deciphered as consistently Vedic and termed Proto Brahmi as a pre Sanskrit script. This piece of pottery from the lowest level of Harappan excavations with pre-Harappan writing is deciphered as Ila Vartite Vhara, referring to the sacred land bounded by the Saraswati River described in the 